Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Fox Beyer. I am an author, speaker, teacher, and coach. And I want to talk to you today a little bit about different paths that we go through in life. And I'll do it by um, some storytelling because I guess above everything else, I consider myself a storyteller. And I'll begin this way. In the year 2010, the father of a colleague of mine suffered a terrible fall. A few days after learning of the incident, I told my dad all he did was fold his hands, look at me and say, Fox, in life, count your blessings when you have them. And when you don't, try to work things out. My cousin Terry was always uniquely herself. In the early 1980s, she became the first female lifeguard in the history of Manasquan, New Jersey. She went on to enjoy a very successful career in the home decor industry, traveling all over the world. In 2013, she contracted a form of brain cancer. And recently, when talking about her life with her son, Jimmy, Jimmy told me, Fox, all mom said you needed in life was your health. When discussing a related topic with my friend, Johnny Tucker, he told me, Fox, you've never heard of a man on his deathbed wanting more money. What he wants is more time. It takes and it teaches. We see it tick away from the bleachers. It passes and amasses as seen by the lines on my face. On clocks and on watches, the same amount each day allotted. We are late, we are early, and we are hurried by the hands never replaced. As a young buck, I saw my future clear with visions of grandeur, oh dear. From penthouse to outhouse, all mine. I was just lied to by time from young, naive, and romantic, to old, surly, and cantankerous. Back when a greenhorn was amazed to present day in all those yesterdays, Dad says, count your blessings without a doubt, and when you don't have them, try to work things out. I wish I were a robust rock that could break and fix and turn back the world's first clock. As a young buck, I saw my future clear with visions of grandeur, oh dear, from penthouse to outhouse, all mine. I was just lied to by time. <clears throat> In the mid-1990s, Jody O'Donnell, was enjoying life with her husband, Kevin, and their newborn child. By the mid-1990s, Kevin contracted ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. And Jody went from full-time wife and mother to full-time caretaker. By early 2002, Kevin passed away, and Jody struggled over what to do next. When she Googled the phrase, Hope Loves Company, to see if it had been patented, it had not been patented. And today, Jody's Hope Loves Company nonprofit covers five states, serving those and those families affected by ALS. Last night, I lied in bed 
and looked to the sky. I'll tell you what I saw in my mind's eye. It was a place, same in race and in creed, a mighty fine place to be indeed. People not doing for themselves, but for each other. That person right next to them, for sure their brother. These people, for each other they lived. One word on their minds, and that word was give. It was also free and void of things like bigotry, a mighty fine place to be indeed. Free of the incessant and the terrible, it was free of the obnoxious and the horrible. Last night, I lied in bed, and I dreamt for as far as my eyes could see. People, last night, I dreamt of a world that was free of disease. In life, you have very little control over what happens to you. And you also have very little control over the impact you have on other people. Because oftentimes, the impact you have on others is endless. This is the story of Kevin. As a freshman in high school, on a Friday afternoon, Kevin cleaned out his locker. He put all of his belongings into his book bag, and he walked home. On his way home that day, he was approached and beaten by a group of classmates. He was saved from serious harm, however, by another classmate who just happened to be walking by, and he intervened. Some three years later, after this incident, Kevin was delivering his valedictorian speech to his high school class. During that speech, Kevin told this story. He said he cleaned out his locker so his mother wouldn't have to do it. See, Kevin cleaned out his locker that Friday afternoon because he planned to take his life that weekend. But he didn't because he found someone who believed in him. He found a true friend. Kevin went on to attend Georgetown University. For me, math has never been my strong suit. I can recall doing a math problem in college. I felt like I got Ohio for an answer. The fact of the matter is, I spent all day on that problem, and I still have not solved it. But that doesn't mean the math realm has not had an impact on me. It's 1991. I'm 13 years old. I walk into Coach Chambers' math class. And the walls are covered with posters. Many of them are posters of the Got Milk variety. Coach, on all of them, whited out the word milk and put math. Got math, he said. One poster, however, really caught my eye. Coach whited out the entire last line and wrote, overall, the classroom is a safe place. Some 20 years later, in 2011, as a classroom teacher myself, I sat in a faculty meeting and listened and watched on as our principal addressed his staff. When your classroom is safe, he said, you could accomplish miracles. It is so funny how life comes full circle. Retrospect 
it always tells the truth. Retrospect, now I see clearly my youth. Retrospect, I was young and I was dumb. Retrospect, or just a kid having fun. Retrospect, dear God, why did I wear that hat? And retrospect, why did I get angry over that? Retrospect, mom and dad, this place, I'm sick of it. Retrospect, mom and dad, now you're right, because now I miss it. Retrospect, I was always looking for something more. Retrospect, now it's the time and the place that I most adore. Retrospect, time goes by way too fast. Retrospect, I am so glad to still have a past. In the year 2000, the University of South Carolina baseball team enjoyed an unbelievable season winning 56 games and losing only 10. Student coach, I witnessed all of this. We enjoyed a number one ranking for six weeks that season. Our run came to an end that June. We were defeated by Louisiana Lafayette University in the third game of a Super Regional failing to reach our goal, the College World Series. I can recall a few things that happened after the game that day. Coach Toman, our recruiting coordinator, sat in his coach's chair and reflected. It sucks when you lose, he said, and it ain't that much fun when you win. Chris Massaro, our associate athletic director, peeked his head in the room and offered his condolences. I can't imagine what you're feeling, he said. It was then I decided to take my customary run around the track beyond the left field wall in an effort to clear my head. I was very careful in these situations not to disrupt the athletes preparing for their next event. This time, however, I was approached by an athlete who went out of his way to stop me. He came to me and said, I just want to tell you what an inspiration you are to me. Obviously, his words came at a much needed time. Step, you're idle no more. Step, pick yourself up off the floor. Step, get up out of your seat. Step, you will not lie there in defeat. Step, in mind and body a winning tranquility. Step, without movement there is no possibility. Step, each pace equals a seed. Step in the world's largest sequoia tree. Step one by one they will amass. Step core filled passes down victory path. In life, we have very little control over what happens to us. And in life, we have very little way of knowing the impact we have on other people. I hope that you'd understand that your impact on people is endless and that you never know its full impact. But, however, we always have control over how we think. Elon Ferdman, a world-class motivational speaker and life coach, reflected on my podcast, saying, we focus on this negativity all the time. 
we're constantly saying it should be this, it should be that, it should be this, it should be that. It's perfect, he said, always, always, always. And when you get that, you can respond to things differently. You can be like, this was just here for my perfect moment. You can say, thank you, moment, and you move on. This is the story of Holly. At 26 years old, Holly contracted a form of malignant cancer. A day before her passing, she wrote on her Facebook wall, I just wish we could stop worrying about the meaningless stresses in life. Just do all the good you can, she said, minus the bullshit. Last night, I lied in bed and looked to the sky. Once again, I will tell you what I saw in my mind's eye. It was a place same in race and in creed. A mighty fine place to be indeed. People not doing for themselves, but for each other. That person right next to them, for sure their brother. These people, for each other they lived. One word on their minds, and that word again was give. It was also a place free and void of things like bigotry. A mighty fine place to be indeed. Free of the obnoxious and the terrible. Free of the incessant and the horrible. Once again, people, last night I lied in bed and dreamt for as far as my eyes could see. Last night I dreamt of a world free of disease. Again, we don't have much control over what happens to us in life. We have no way of knowing our full impact on people, but we do have control over how we think. So today, think about a different path. Take the path that Terry Soldati took. Take the path that Jody O'Donnell Ames took. Take the path that Kevin's friend took. Forgive yourself and take a hero's path. All of your life, you push it to the limit. You hope and you wish for a salary six digits. Wanting the cash, the cake, and the glue. Wanting to be better than anyone you ever knew. Wanting it all through every minute, second, and passing hour. It's the coin, the coin, the coin that has the power. The times they fade and memories they pass. So I ask you, which is the currency that lasts? Is it the bank, your cash? My friend, I'm afraid that those things don't last. But what about time and advice you've passed on to family and friends? I think it's those things that don't have an end. I've come to one conclusion, all of you lads. Your impact on each other is the greatest currency you could ever have. And life can be marked by ups, downs, and incessant jealousies. But forgiveness is the one thing that gets the goat of your enemies. When you are bruised and you are battered, it will all be water under the bridge, but not with a snap of the fingers. 
because it takes time to forgive. Again, my name is Fox Byer. I'm a teacher, author, speaker, and coach, and I'm just encouraging you today to realize three things. One, in life, we have very little control over what happens to us. If you just listened to the previous summit, Michael Hoffman, he is a depiction of that. You have very little control over the impact you have on people. And you might not know the impact you have on people. If you heard my story, my seventh grade math teacher, Coach Chambers, he didn't know that he was going to have an impact on me 20 years later. I was just a kid, a 13-year-old kid who, dis who, dis who disliked math very much. But I saw those posters, and they all had an impact on me. But you do have control over how you think. If you constantly say to yourself, I should be here in this moment, it is easier to move on. And I hope those stories of Jody O'Donnell Ames, Terry Soldati, Kevin's friend, and the story of Holly, who did indeed post the day before she passed on Facebook. I hope those things had an impact on you. Take a hero's path. And my offer today, if you enjoyed what you heard and you want to hear more, email me off my website, foxbuyer.com. That's F-O-X. B-E-Y-E-R.com. Fire me an email on the bottom of, of my home page of my, my website. I would be glad to send you a copy of my book, Letter Kindling, Igniting, Inspiring, and Evoking the Fire Within. It's got poems in it, um, many of which you just heard in this last presentation, which was called Paths. If you really like what you heard and you think my words could benefit your group, class, or organization, again, email me off my website, foxbuyer.com, F-O-X-B-E-Y-E-R.com. Be inspired. Take good care. Tanya, back to you. Thanks, Sonia. This is the least I is the least I could do. How how are things on the Western Front, Tanya? Good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. You two trying to take good care now. Bye.